All right, what are we going to be doing here today? All right. Oh, wait, hold on. I'll be with you guys for a second. Give me a second. Yeah, make a quick man. I'm doing the recording. Who? FF? Famous Frauds? I heard of those guys, yeah. You put it you put it behind me? What? Oh, okay. Yeah, I know that guy. I, I know all these guys. All right, guys, we're here today at What's Going On, and this section today is sponsored by Famous Frauds, Combo Fiends, Tutorial DVD, How to Be a Training Dummy. And if you guys watch this DVD, you'll be fiending to get hit by combos in no time. All right, so let's move on to the news. The news today I have for you is Soul Calibur 5 and Street Fighter vs. Tekken. Now, Soul Calibur 5 is a very popular franchise that I personally like to play. Many of you don't know I play it. I do. Many of you who are close to me do know I play this. That's not the point, right? So, we have returning cast members, Cervantes and Yoshimitsu. I'm very pleased about this. Yoshimitsu probably still following the same storyline that he returned from the future to the past. That's cool, wherever they go with that. Cervantes got a new body now, and now he's a pirate all of a sudden again. He's probably not corrupted by the Soul Edge. I'd like to see how that goes because... You know, he's supposed to be so evil that he took over the Soul Edge, and I thought that was cool. We have new members, Aeon and Zibia. Now, I wouldn't say exactly that Aeon is a new character. I think it's just like the Shotos in Capcom. It's just a new style lizard man who apparently forgot how to fight, and now he has the memories of the praise that he's slain, or whatever. Zibia, new fresh style Killick, new school Killick, which you would say, returning Monkey King style character with a staff. I'd like to see how that plays out. And as for Street Fighter versus Tekken, I'm loving what they're doing with the alternates. I've seen Rufus with like tons of alternates. I've seen Chun-Li wearing King's costume. I like it, but I really hope they bring in the Tekken style customization where you can get a really hands-on feel of your character, change clothing, change color, skin edits. I think that's really cool. I just hope it's free and not downloadable content. Don't do this to me again, Capcom, please. Uh, we're here at Asshole Anonymous, and we got questions, of course, that I unfortunately have to answer. Some of them, not too bad this time, so I'm not too pissed. But our first question, first two question, is from Arctic Norris, right? He says, hey dude, I'm having trouble with just approaching with him mostly against characters like Virgil and Zero and by the way the character he's talking about is Frank West okay so let's get into Frank West real quick Frank West is a character who relies on this leveling up ability that he has it's one through five uh, on the second one he gets a roll these are the, I'm only going to discuss the most important levels with you which is two and five all right basically at two you gain a roll where he gains a extra bit of more mobility and at level five he gains ridiculous normals so let's just deal with the level that's most attainable, which is level two, right? So you ask me if Frank West has any way of approaching characters with range like Dante, Nemesis even, Virgil. See, what happens here is, is Frank West is a character who lacks mobility and like any character that lacks mobility, he's gonna need heavily rely on an assist. But I'll give you some tactics for situations where you don't have an assist such as, you know, where he's left alone, basically, or an assist that just doesn't back him properly. Well, what happens is, with Frank Rest, is you can throw zombies, you know, the spin around move where he basically flings the zombie across the stage. You can do that to kind of close the gap and annoy your opponent, because the zombies come out so fast, sometimes it doesn't give your opponent enough time to react with a answer themselves, such as a projectile. I wouldn't say a super, they could probably do a super on you, but not a projectile, or not any kind of normal that launches across the screen because they'll end up running into the zombie. And what happens there is he spins forward and what are you doing? You're closing the gap. You can also use Frank West slide and you can bunny hop with him. That's normally the method anybody would use with a character with no mobility. Um, bunny hopping, I'm not too fond of it, but you do have to do it with Frank West. So I'd like to move on to your other question where you asked me 
if Spidey would be a decent assist. Yes, he would. I also happen to think that Spider-Man is also a very cheap character on point. So this way, you picking him for his good assist won't backfire on you when he comes into the match. The only problem is Spider-Man does not have a safe way to enter the match unless you have a point character or your point character at the moment can safely bring him in. Other than that, Spider-Man doesn't really have a safe way into the match. Why do I say Spider-Man is a decent assist? It's because of his web ball assist, which has tons of durability. I've seen that thing eat through drones, fireballs, and they, it just keeps going through. I'm not too sure how high the durability gets, but I know it has a whole lot and it's really cheap. I just don't think that people have explored the character enough to know what he's capable of. I really think he's scheming somewhere top five in the game. All right, so our next question is from Mike Hedgecat. Um, he asked me if Doctor Strange at all can do a mid-air impact palm loop. Yes, he can. I'll be demonstrating that for you within his tutorial that we have being released later on in the week. So you can check that out to see how that's done. All right, so our next question is from Raid602. Are you kidding me? You guys gotta do something with the names, all right? All right, so he goes, hey, I got a question. Can Firebrand work well with Strange? Now, I'm not gonna lie to you, no. But in terms of someone who likes thinking outside the box, AKA me, what you can do is you can put Strange on point and have Firebrand as your secondary character, as an assist. What you can do is either put him on the assist where he spits the Hellfire to the ground and it kind of covers Doctor Strange going in front of him. I don't know how well that works, but I would use the swoop, the, uh, the demon move, whatever that's called, demon missile uh, Y, where he does the little swoop and it goes across. It basically covers uh, Doctor Strange's uh, weak point, his head point, and you can do teleport gimmicks. It's I'm kind of stretching it, but you can make it work, all right? Um, you also want to like put Eye of Agamotto out there when you do things like that. You gotta back up yourself while you do it. You can't rely. You know how there's a sis that you can rely on to do the work for you, aka Hagar, drones. Once you get those assists on the screen, you don't really have to be too conscious about your own zoning. But this style of team that you want to work, you actually have to be on point with your zoning and with your assist calls, unlike other teams, if you catch my drift. so. The next message that we have is from Geo2N2. Uh, this is definitely a guy who plays like World of Warcraft or something. Uh. So, do you plan to put up the returning characters missions? I'm stuck on Spidey's, no video how to be found. You know what, for you, I'll do Spidey's mission modes just for you. I'm not gonna tell you what I'm gonna do it, but it'll be very soon, probably be this episode or the next episode. But you wait around and I'll submit the video showing you how to do his character mission. and. We'll generally do the other characters' missions, and we have a special wink wink tutorial of teams coming out for you guys. All right, so thank you for sending your messages over here. You guys work on those names, change those names, take the advice I gave you, and that's basically all I have to say. All right, guys, we're here at Blow Up of the Week, and this week's Blow Up is you guys. Why? Because there's so many videos and so little time, so we decided that. You're gonna be in charge of this section. Since we're working so hard at Finger Cramp, you guys are gonna work hard too. Uh, how's it feel? Now, what I want you guys to do for me is, which should be really fun for you anyway, pick any topic, pick any video you want, submit it to us, and we'll review it, and we'll see if it makes it to the blow up of the week. Well, we're gonna blow it up for you guys. So you can submit this or link it to our Twitter account, which is fingercramp at twitter.com, or our Facebook account at fingercramp at facebook.com and so on and so forth. So I'd like to see how fun we can deal with this section now that you guys will be the ones in charge of it. All right guys, this is I need to vent and I need to vent really. I've been frustrated, angry. I'm trying to prepare for AE 2012. I've been using Honda, Blanc again and I just don't have the rhythm to do these 100 hand combos. And the thing is, I found a way guys. I went to Famous Fraud's very own Mike Ross to learn the rhythm on his new instructional video on how to do 100 hands. Now I know that I can't miss 100 hands just like Mike Ross. Tune in.
a little performance, right? Affirmative. <laughs> Music exposes them to the culture, the real culture. All right, it's FC Jago here with FC Hack, and we've been watching um, Famous Frauds Mike Ross tutorial video, and we kind of got the rhythm now to do hundred hands, and I have Hack here who's gonna be doing the hundred hands because I don't feel that my fingers have the dexterity to do it, so we're gonna have Hack do it. So first, I'd like to tell you guys about the two different style of inputs you can use, the most popular ones. Uh, so the first thing with 100 hands is jab, strong, fierce, jab, fierce. That would be the first one that you use. That is the most commonly used one in terms of technical play. The other one that's used is jab, strong, wait, is it? Yeah, jab, strong, fierce, strong, fierce. That would be the slide method, where the slide method is applied. And we're gonna see Hack more accurately get 100 hands now because of this. This is the more easier, universal way that everyone does this. But the more practical way and more technical way that everyone prefers to go to is the input method, where that takes a lot more training of the hands and muscle memory and dexterity, which is why you don't see me on the game right now. For Gen players, um, they tend to do low forward into Mantis Fist. The way they do that is by setting their fingers up and how you'll see Hack setting his fingers up with his thumb there and they'll press crouching forward with the jab at the same time and then complete the rest of the string. That's not going to work with Honda Hack, you might as well stop. You don't have Gen. Um, for you guys that want further information on this, you gotta tune into the tutorial video, um, sponsored by uh, you know famous frauds. And I don't know what else more I can say, guys. I just I picked up learning hundred hands after watching the video. So that's us signing off. Let's let's get out of here. All right, guys. So hopefully that rhythm tutorial by famous frauds' very own Mike Ross was enough to help you guys and you saw how it gave me the rhythm to do 100 hands because I could never do it but now I can thanks to Mike Ross thank you Mike Ross um, also we have a very special 10 minute tutorial on Phoenix Wright we're releasing his tutorial within this episode we normally release it as a separate video but in this episode we'll be releasing because we think he's a very intricate character we want to give him a little special attention so there you have it Super effective in turn amount mode, so if you can extend the combos as long as possible. Uh, we're gonna actually go into his bread and butters. I want to show you guys the ones you'll be using uh, at, e at tournament level or whatever you need to be effective in, in this game. So as you can see, I stands changed into uh, order in the court. So you get rid of bad evidence, you take decent damage, and you can get started again. The second combo is something to lead to his uh, his actual objection move, so you get into turnabout mode. You can actually do a jumping fierce if you time it correctly, but I just wanted you to know that once you're in turn turnabout mode, get this guy out of here. Uh, this one's a pretty elaborate one, showing most uh, showing a re-dizzy in the middle of the air and the ground bounce. I use all of his techniques, even the wall bounce, and a combo into this is not even the next factor and taking over 839k and I have about half of it left. In, in these modes, I would honestly recommend you um, uh, Using less elaborate combos, he will kill people fast and you will have X Factor at that point. So, you know, try to save turnabout mode as much as you can. It lasts a long time. Your opponents are going to know it. But uh, these combos are there just in case the last character is there. You got the hit on them. Just kill them. Uh, this is where I'm... Uh this will determine how good Phoenix Wright actually is. I believe most of the Phoenix Wright's problems rely on his assists. So um, a lot of assists become matchup specific. Uh, you can have Phoenix Wright on point at all times. You just have to have the right assist to stop them. 
which is something that people should make note of extremely quickly. Some work better than the others, like Sentinel Drones and Vajra are just good. Uh, another one that's not included there, including there is uh, some uh, Amy's Cold Star, which is really good. I've been using that recently. Uh, Plasma Amy is always good for characters who can't, um, who have mostly physical attacks and just want to get you want to knock them back full screen. That's the one you want to use to be super annoying. Uh, as as I told you before, most of him his uh, actual offense relies on his great defense. So we're gonna get into that now. So uh, we actually bringing out Maya now. As you guys know, Maya is amazing. Uh, thank you, Maya, for being so cool. Uh, this is a technique I've, I've been I've been looking into. As you can see, it nullifies all attacks, and you can actually get combos off of it. Call Maya and do a, a, a pseudo um, a, a actual dash assist. Uh, what what that does is if the let's say that the opponent is teleporting, you dash forward and you sort of protect your assist with the Maya's shield. Since Sentinel is so tall, it's easy for Dante to hit him in the head, but other assists totally, are totally protected by the shield. So what you want to do is like a, a Kara, a, basically a dash into assist. People use that when they're doing OTG combos. You definitely want to do it right away. And if you time it a little later, uh, Sentinel's totally protected right there. And only a few characters can actually beat the which is Dante or uh, I, I want you guys to note Ghost Rider pretty much defeats uh, Maya and you with the jumping um, uh, S move. So you guys should know that that's the only move that I've seen actually stop this shield uh, consistently. But even then, if you push back correctly, you get Maya out, you still get good to collect evidence. Collect that evidence, and the whole point is collecting evidence and learn this Kara assist technique, it's all about that. Oh, this is also a cool move, uh, it's deceiving. His forward B actually goes over lows and activates right away, so if you got the Maya assist out there and you know this guy's fishing, and he, um, uh, but the Maya assist will uh, take it away anyway, but it's just cool looking, goes over lows, and can be canceled into his collecting evidence. So that's what you want to do. You never want to leave that move lingering unless you're going to um, uh, do his quad sucker forward um, into a... Uh, into Maya to come out OTG. So cancel into collecting evidence and that it causes a hard knockdown, which is pretty neat. Uh, so there is your saving grace. And if you're getting rushed down, which you will likely be getting as far, once people start to figure out that Phoenix is the problem and needs to be killed right away, uh, then you can start seeing a lot of snapbacks. And so you're gonna have that super on deck. When she's out there, she's out. So you should pay, pay note of that at all times. Now I'm gonna get into his, uh, you know, basically uh, lightly into his, some of his range games. As you can see, I don't have knife, so I'm not that happy right now. A teleport could probably get me killed at this point so I will opt not to using especially a character like Dante and since a lot of the new cast does have this ooh now the tables have turned uh, I, I as a smart player, if you do have another character, switch this guy out immediately and use this assist to its fullest. I'm just going to stand around half the time. As you can see, even at Sentinel, I've become a real big problem. Uh, uh, this assist is the best assist in the game, hands down. Nothing stopping. It takes 240k, causes a wall bounce, easy to combo off of. And Okay, so we're here at the end of the show, and as usual, you guys can sign up and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Set Finger Cramp. You can like us on Facebook, follow us at Twitter, and etc. Also, we've been releasing character guides for the 12 new characters in Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3. All right, you guys check out that, those tutorials, I should say, and see what you learn from them. It's the 12 new characters only. We'll be considering the returning cast. Probably not, because it's like 50 something characters. But if we do see a special request here and there throughout the season, maybe, maybe, I'm not gonna give you that much. I'm signing off, I'll see you guys later, okay? You'll learn how to get the rhythm. Wink, wink. Oh, fuck. I said wink, wink. <laughs> <laughs>